I've got my Camelback, I've got my maps, I've got all my comm stuff, my radio, my camera, my spot, my, my gloves, I've got my backup batteries, I've got all my first aid stuff, my survival stuff, food stuff, all my stuff for my tent. And then I've got all the stuff for the bike. I've got my spare tires, my chain lube, my pump, the battery jumper box, spare levers, I've got two pouches of other tools, and then of course I've got my tank bag. This trip had about a thousand moving pieces to it. First, we had to come up with six GS bikes. So you'll see that lines up on a notch, and then this has to line up in that little hole right there. This piece here. Are you okay with there being no spacer in here? Oh, this one's different. And then we had to learn how to ride off-road on 500-pound machines. It is Friday morning, about to head out to the training school. Five of us have never done this before. It's crazy how unwieldy it is on the gravel. Uh, I, I'm a street rider. Uh, I've done almost nothing in the back country, nothing really on gravel. None of this makes sense without the bigger story of the trip itself. You don't put all this together unless you're going somewhere. <laughs> we did all this Whoa! so we could get to this. The bits and pieces of our lives don't make any sense without the story they fit into. And it's those glands that are right next to the beaver butt, they secrete the fluid that marks their territory. We harvest like 400 pounds a year in the United States oh as gosh. a substitute for vanilla flavor. That's so crazy, beaver butt. Wait, you hit a beaver? Dad, did you just chime in? Yeah. Oh man, you can't come in the middle of a story. You can't just walk in on the middle of a story. But that is exactly how most people experience their life. Like a movie they showed up to 30 minutes late. Good things happen, bad things happen, and we just don't know how to make sense of it all. The British playwright Tom Stoffert tells this story about his work where he says, a man owns a peacock farm and one day he's shaving himself when he looks out the window and one of his peacocks has escaped and is running down the highway. So he throws on his robe, dashes out the door half shaven, chases the peacock down, catches it. And I don't tell the story, Tom Stafford says, from the perspective of the man shaving. And I don't tell the story from the perspective of the peacock. I tell the story from the perspective of the car passing at 70 miles an hour who looks out the window and sees a half shaven man holding a peacock by the side of the highway. Wearing a bathrobe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, dude, that's it. That, that's the postmodern dilemma, right? It's the people flying down the road. What? It, it's the loss of story. Right. The events of your life, both the good and the bad, are like scenes from a movie. If you don't have the rest of the movie, you can't make sense of your scene. Hey, guys, I just got to do this. Movies are popular because they speak to the story need inside of us. Luke, so love that. Star Wars has been such a huge part of our right. growing up, the story, yeah. the mythicness. Feels like we're on Tatooine right now. So much fun. I just love even just pretending to be a stormtrooper out here in the dunes. Like, I've been trying to make stormtrooper armor out of cardboard since I was four. Totally. And I just remember like growing up and using lightsabers, pretending to be Jedi up and down the street. Yeah. So fun. The story has just always captured our imagination. Yeah. What, what is it? Epic stories, you know, great trailers. They, they, it works. Like it mm -hmm. captures something in our soul. Totally. I think it's the hugeness. Luke and I have burned hours on road trips across the country just talking about Star Wars because none of the characters are dead ends. Yeah. They all open outwards and you dig into one character and find, wait, 
he got that gun from that character and that's connected to the mythic trajectory of the universe in these ways. Okay, that line, the mythic trajectory of the universe, like that's it. And I think the reason that we love these things so much, the movies that we love, the stories, the novels, myths, legends, is that they are all saying one story. Mm. Like they're all speaking to one thing, right? Yeah. There's an epic battle, you know, of good and evil, right? Mm. That has to be fought. And then there's these small characters in an epic landscape that they get to rise up, right? And mm. they get to play some valiant role. and. And then at the end of all of them, some incredible restoration, right? Like the Death Star is destroyed or, you know, at the end of Lord of the Rings, Gondor is back in its mm -hmm. glory and the king has returned. Yeah. Like, that's the gospel. Like, mm. that, that's the story that God is telling. Like, we are in story, and there's only one story. Mm -hmm. And the world just keeps retelling the same story and myth and fairy tale and poem and legend. And now, you know, the epic trilogies and those films. What we're actually describing here is there is a larger story, mm -hmm. and we have a place in it. Wow. Mm -hmm. It, somehow we know the world is broken. We know we are, but somehow on stage or in a movie, we can somehow connect to the characters, but they also are telling something of the nature of our own story. We connect to the person because we know brokenness, but we also know that we're looking for redemption. Somehow the story itself from the brokenness is a search in some ways to see it all brought back together again. And so when that ending comes, when, when we know that finally restoration has occurred, I mean, our lives are given a perspective of this is what we were meant for. And here is the incredible hope that the movies that we love, the stories that we love, the legends, the myths, they are all telling us something true about the universe. We do live in a great story. And what Jesus was trying to get across to the human race is, there is meaning, you are part of something great and good, right? And heroic rescue through his life and death and resurrection, we are rescued and are now called up into a great story. Yes, there's a battle of good and evil. Just watch the news, right? Yes, you are needed small characters on an epic landscape. Like, we get to live in the greatest story of all. Your life is like a scene from a movie or a chapter from a novel. Without the rest of the story, it will never, ever make sense.